So you've asked your group to pick a partner so that you can form smaller teams and they immediately make a beeline to their best friends. Ah! I get it, this frustrates me too. But what if I told you there are lots of fun and engaging ways that you can form small groups of two people or pairs or partners and you don't have to use the same old, same old? Well, that's exactly what this video is intended to share with you. So you have an activity that you need partners for, pairs, groups of two people. And so the natural inclination is to say, hey, pick a partner. <laughs> However, while I didn't know this at the time as a primary or elementary school student, I can remember Mr. Graham, my PE teacher at school, and one of the most frightening things he ever said to me in the class with this, not that we had to do tumble turns and somersaults and all that other stuff, I was never particularly good at that, but the most frightening thing he ever did was when he said, pick a partner. Because when he said pick a partner, what I actually heard him say was, find someone you like or are like. Yeah. You know, you know what happens. You ask for people to pick a partner and they naturally go to their their friends. And that's just really natural. There's actually nothing inherently wrong with that. Because as humans, we are comfort seeking machines. But if you're in the business of building connections, then the way you go about most things should always be about helping that process along. So particularly if your group is pretty new to each other or completely new to each other, then picking a partner can be ah, a sort of experience for people. So I want you to consider different ways of doing it. The key is that the stronger you form the relationships of your group, the more it's going to amplify whatever you're trying to get done. And here's the bonus is that not only do you form those pairs, but you also build those relationships. So why rely on the old traditional ways of forming pairs when you could find something that's fun and engaging? So in a moment, I'm going to share with you some hot principles, but very shortly, I've got 10, 15, 20 or more different ways, fun and engaging ways that you can form pairs. When I think of hot principles, when it comes to forming pairs, there's a couple of things I would like you to keep in mind. One, got to make it fun. You know, that has got to be your most powerful magnet to attract engagement, because if you're meeting resistance, even before you've done the activity by simply forming a pair, you've got a real problem. So make it fun and I've got some great ways to show you how to do that in just a few moments. The other part is that I want you to take a leaf out of what I call the play to grow framework. Uh, this is the first three steps of a five step model that I use liberally throughout all the programs that I run. So it starts with the play. You want to find ways in which it's something that's attractive. It's fun. It's something people don't want to stand away from. So that play is the first step. The next step is to invite interaction. You'll notice that sometimes I might use a variety of these techniques before I settle on one that is the one that I want to use for the next activity. And that third step is invite sharing. Don't miss the opportunity that you've found this random person to connect with and get to know them a little bit better. You know, form a connection, build that relationship. And the more often you do that, you'll notice the stronger the bonds that occur within your group. Okay, get ready, here they come. 10, 15, 20 or more fun and engaging ways to break your large group into groups of two people, pairs or partnerships. Um, there is just so many different ways. So I'm gonna give them in lots of different categories. Let's start with color. It could be the color of the top they're wearing, the, the color of their eyes, the color of their hair, the color of their shoes or any other part. Maybe something they're holding. They provide immediate opportunities to break up clicks, but also find a random partner. You could also find shoes, just the type of shoe, how it's used, how many holes are in, how much money you spent on it. Um, also, the sole of your shoe. It's really interesting. We don't often spend any time looking at the soles of someone's shoe, but when you start focusing on that and you focus on someone else's sole, then you're looking for someone that has a similar pattern to you. Again, a random but fun way that would engage a group to find a random partner. Jewelry. Find someone else with a similar type of jewelry to you, or maybe on the same arm or ear. 
It could be some other adornment like a tattoo or no tattoo, the number of tattoos. That could be a way that you could find a partner. Birth, oh my goodness, there's so many different ways here. It could be the birth month, it could be their birth date, the year. What about the zodiac sign? Where in the world you were born? Perhaps the town, the state, the country. They are all opportunities for finding a random partner. What about hair? Oh my goodness, uh, it could be the length of the hair, the color of the hair as we've mentioned already. Is it, is it uh, flat or is it curly? Um, maybe you've got no hair. <laughs> they are again a very obvious way to find a partner. Oh, this next option, uh, there's just limitless ways. I call it the favorites. What's your favorite book or your favorite genre of book or movie? Uh, there are just so many different options. What's your favorite breakfast cereal, your favorite uh, hot beverage, cold beverage, favorite holiday destination, you name it. Again, not only are these opportunities to find someone that you connect with, and that's so critical when you're building relations with people because you are finding something you have in common. That is one of the first steps towards actually building a relationship and helping people feel more comfortable. And when it starts with something that's your favorite, more often than not, it's something that you're quite willing to share with somebody else. Favorites is a very, very long list. You'll never run out of ideas using that as a technique to form random partners. Numbers. Oh my goodness, uh, everyone's got a mobile phone or a cell phone these days. So find someone else with the same last digit as you or their street address. I live at number 13, find someone else in the teens or has the last number the same as you. Social security number, credit card number. Okay, maybe, maybe you don't wanna share that information, but all you're sharing is the last digit. And honestly, they can make it up. It does not matter. That you've invited forms of interaction with other people as you're looking for others that you have something in common with, having a little bit of fun, and it's more than likely something they've not done before to find a partner. Again, we're comparing it to the standard, pick a partner and everyone finds their friend. All right, uh, we're way past 20 ideas now, but let's go for one more. And this would be fingers. Place your hands behind your back. Uh, it could be two hands, it could be just the one hand. And then on go, Simply extend a certain number of fingers on your hand and look for someone with the same number of fingers that are exposed. So in this case, I'd be looking for someone that has six fingers extended. But if I'm using one hand, it might be just four fingers. Again, as you will have heard through other parts of the content that I share, you're always honoring choice. So a question you might have is, well, how do you police that the person that have just joined a partnership actually had the same number? Uh, you can't. You would never be able to do that. And there will always, 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 if people actually follow the rules, it may not actually work out that everyone finds a partner. So towards the end, here's my, one of my last minute tips, is just simply ask people who are still looking for a partner to raise their hand and anyone in the room that you can look around and see has their hand raised can be an eligible partner for you. Now, if you're concerned they might still just go to their friend, you might also frame it as find someone that perhaps you haven't paired with yet. So try these out. There is no shortage of different ways you can form fun and engaging ways uh, to get a partner for your activity. And once you've got that partnership and maybe you've done a couple of these, you're now ready to launch into the activity you needed those groups of two people for. So now I've got an invitation for you. What's one of your favorite ways of engaging your group to find a random partner? I'd love to know, but here's the other bonus that when you add it to the comments down below, you're actually sharing it with the collective wisdom of the whole world, practitioners who love group games and activities just as much as you do. And by sharing it, you're actually just adding more value to everybody else. And maybe the next person who watches this video will learn from you. So scoot down, add your own comment. And here's my promise. I will respond to every single comment. I'll add it to my list. I'll beg and borrow and steal from you and all others. But I might also add something that you haven't thought of that would make that technique even better. And of course, this is just the start. There is so much more resources that you can get access to. Check the notes below this video and you will get access to tons of other free resources. If you love group games and activities and are responsible for the well-being of your group, 
then these are going to be your best friends. And importantly, you can also start a seven day free trial. That will unlock hundreds, more than 500 activities, giving you all the step by step instructions and video tutorials to be able to run these activities with confidence and ease yourself. Go to playmeo.com to get all of the details that you need. And finally, I would encourage you to subscribe. If you found value in this video, feel free to share it with other people, but subscribe to this channel and importantly, click the bell so that you get notified when a new video, often on a weekly basis, is added to this channel. Okay, I hope you found value. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And for now, I just want you to have fun out there.